What's up, Eli? Yo, Derek, what's good, my boy? <laughs> hey, your stadium look kind of nice. You know it's nice? I need to see the jerseys. You want to see the jerseys? Yeah. You're going to have to beat me a horse to find out. Run it. Say that. I'm going to hit this case out real quick. Look, look Curry, you actually feel me? I got half court shot. Boy, that's a brick. Better go. Run the it on you. Back here. Go up some stairs. That boy think he a five star. He about to make some crazy shots. Ooh, you see it. I got something for you. Your way now, let me see. Say less. <laughs> My shot from back here. Hey! Go something like that. Easy. Off the scoreboard. Ain't no way. Cash! He just made that shot. Ooh. I got something he ain't never tried before. Scoreboard bounce and in the rim. Here we go. And hey, you a bad man if you make this shot. Show me something a little deep. All right, boy, check this out. He ain't making it. Hey. Ah, that's what I thought. Well, let me see the jersey now. Oh, nah, the all white goes crazy. Oh, nah, that's ah. crazy. Hey, you got me, bro, but. Yeah. It ain't over yet. Oh, really? You ain't seen that helmet yet. Put me on. Yo, let me let's see. Go, let's go. We ain't done. Off the bench, blindfolded. We're ending this right now. You for real? Right to the top. Let's go. Come on, let's go. It's high as all. Get out. This was like for you all the time. I wish it was. <laughs> all right, let me show you. Let me see this. Put you on. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. You got that one. Yeah. We ready for that game? Yes. 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 Yes, sir! We see Jacquez Moore out there for the first time tonight. The sophomore out of Live Oak, Florida, to the right of Riley Leonard. Here's the snap. He's going to get the carry running left. Cuts inside. Huge hole, 45 midfield. Moore is loose. Down the left sideline, 30. He's going to take it all the way for the touchdown. What carry. And he breaks it open here in the fourth quarter. Honestly, I want our running game to look like it looked Saturday night. I mean, we want to be able to run the ball regardless of how many people they put in the box. We want to be able to control when we run the ball. We, we don't ever want another team to be able to dictate to us what we have to do. And I thought that was the challenge we laid down to our guys last week, and they really rose up to it. Inside handoff for Waters. He'll get a couple more. Maybe he'll have a touchdown. Stretches. He's in! Wow, what a physical presence. Jordan Waters punches it in. Obviously what we did to Northwestern going on the road in a Big Ten environment and you know being able to run the ball as effectively as we did right out of the gates and I thought we were able to create holes and seams all, all day. Um, I thought we had some success moving the ball against Kansas at times and then you know I thought the other night was kind of our, our highlight of the year is just an outnumbered box pretty much all night and us to have the success we had running the football I think is a testament to a lot of things. I think our coaching, our scheme, our players, our execution, I think it all came together last Saturday. They quickly come to the line, Leonard from under center, maybe a quarterback sneak. He will, pushes it ahead, didn't need much. Spins to the right, he's got a touchdown! How about that? Leonard found some room, and now he's dancing in the end zone. With 10 and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter last Saturday, uh, when our offensive line went out there and ran the ball for seven and a half straight minutes. And that's what you want. You want being physical, being strong, being confident in your ability to do those things allows you to have some type of control in the game, uh, and you don't always feel like you're chasing the game. Under center, it's Leonard on second and goal, takes the snap, tosses to the right, Coleman stretches it into the end zone, standing up for the opening touchdown. You know, we went into the Temple game and really felt like we had to loosen up the boxes because we felt like that was the best way we could get running game going and so we threw the ball a lot coming out we got a lot of nakeds going Riley got real hot early that created some looks later in the game for us to run the ball effectively you know this game was different the weather the the matchups it just felt like for us to have success we wanted to be able to run the ball early uh, and we were able to get that established so I think it's kind of a week-to-week -week conversation now here comes down Mullen in motion here's the snap straight ahead with Coleman inside the five cuts to the right and he takes it inside the one Leonard from under center Coleman no more than three feet behind him. It's a quarterback sneak and he tunnels. No official signal yet. Certainly looked like he was in. Touchdown. Two. Third and two. No pin and pull here. Straight ahead. Coleman inside the five. Spinning into the end zone for the touchdown. 
something that was really important to us as we put the staff together. We wanted to make sure that we were able to come up with some creative ideas. And so obviously, Trooper Taylor heads up our running backs, and you know he does a great job getting those guys ready to go. And then Adam Cushion works specifically with our offensive line, and, and then Kevin Johns oversees it all. And I think the three of them kind of work together week in, week out to come up with the plan. Inside give to Waters, run it through, arm tackles, take it to Coleman, running right, has room on the right side, turns the corner, 45, here's Moore, running left, huge hole, 15, steps out of a tackle, 12, and take it, tacklers with them down to the nine, on the ground again, running left again, this time it's Jalen Coleman through the hole and across midfield, Weatherly again, this time running right, through the hole, 15, 10, Weatherly goes outside and takes it in for the touchdown. Offensively, I think our potential is through the roof. I think we're, we're still learning, still growing, getting used to um, just being around each other, um, playing on the field, because this is our first time with our, our new offensive coaches and offensive staff. Um, so I think there's still some, some learning going on there. But I mean, I feel like right now we're starting to hit our, our feet running, getting used to everything, and I think we're going really going to be really special. All Access is brought to you by Gatorade and our commitment to fuel tomorrow. By Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. And by Coke Zero Sugar. With Zero Sugar and refreshingly delicious, is Coca-Cola Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. It first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. Can they handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by like a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to a hundred. Continental. Welcome to the Smart Choice in Tires. You said no blitz. You said no blitz. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. Behind every adventure is the road that got you there. Behind every passion are the tools that make it happen. And behind every Ford truck and SUV is a Carolina Ford dealer going the extra mile, finding the vehicle you're looking for. It's our commitment to your journey. That's what it means to be true blue. New inventory is arriving daily. For great offers on a new Ford truck or SUV, go to buyfordnow.com or see your Carolina Ford dealer today. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like, they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and take tailgating very seriously. Game day and beyond, grab a football-ready Big Bow Box. I need to try it first. Yeah. Straight ahead, huge hole inside the 10, the 5, into the end zone, touchdown! Wow! Coleman right up the gun, and the Blue Devils strike first. Here's the snap, gonna keep it on the ground, running left. Huge hole, Waters inside the 30, runs through a couple arm tackles, and now he's gone! 10, 5, touchdown! Coleman's got one, Waters got one, and it's 13 to nothing. A lot of teams have thunder and lightning, we really have thunder and thunder inside handoff for Waters. He'll get a couple more. Maybe he'll have a touchdown. Stretches. He's in! Wow, what a physical presence. Jordan Waters punches it in. Gonna keep it on the ground with Coleman running right, and he will take it into the end zone for the touchdown. Jalen Coleman with his fourth of the season. I think they're both very similar. You know, they're bigger backs. Uh, they both run extremely physical. And, and one of the things that it does is it really allows us to wear on the defense because, you know, it's not like when we do the change up, we're bringing in a lighter guy that's shiftier. Uh, we just take one 200 pound guy off and bring in another 200 pound guy. And so, you know, the physicality, the pounding keeps going. Jordan is beyond physical. I um, mean, he, he pounds and punishes dudes without a doubt. And my job is to be able to, to outrun, outmaneuver guys 
um, when they need me to. But I definitely think that that one-two punch is something special. J. Cole, he's a he's a uh, he's a state winner in, in track, so he's he's very explosive more than I am. Uh, he can explode differently, and it's, it's crazy to watch from the sideline the way he runs. Me, I just do what I can do. Uh, try to get behind my pass. I'm a big guy, so I try to use that to my ability. Honestly, I think I lacked that past couple of years, or I don't think I was confident like going in the game. And but now, like, I want contact. I want to run downhill. To, uh, we don't do too many juke moves. We want to punish the defender. Our lightning comes when we get a Jacquez Moore in the game or we get a Terry Moore in the game, which we were able to do the other night. Uh, and those guys maybe have a little bit more of that elusiveness or shiftiness about them. We pride ourselves on being the best running backs in the conference. And I think we're, we're working towards it to be the best. And like we said, like Coach Ruth said, there's no downfall between us two. And that's how we want to keep it. We challenged them both a lot in the spring. Um, I, we didn't feel like in the beginning they ran like 200 pound backs. We felt like they were a little too quick to try to get outside, a little too quick to try to make people miss. And I think as they've gotten stronger and more confident in, them, in themselves, they've really learned how to get behind their pads as they run the football. And you're starting to see that. You're starting to see us really finish runs. And there's a lot of times where those guys are delivering the blow uh, rather than taking the hit, right? And that's what you want from running backs. Body changes looking at myself in the mirror, man. Uh, I can definitely see it. Um, honestly, like that first couple weeks, we, we started the winter training, uh, just seeing myself get bigger, um, and then my teammates as well. I was, you know, definitely surprised at how much weight we would be able to push to move around, um, and then our conditioning level as well. I thought that was extremely important in order for us to be, you know, a physical but also a conditioned team that can go the distance and to beat people in the fourth quarter when it really matters. The offseason is very important. I never realized how important it is. and. Having a great spring and an even better summer has made me more confident. I'm pretty sure it made the whole team more confident. And going into games, being confident that we're, we're physical, we're just as big, we're just as fast, and being able to compete with bigger guys and feeling bigger, looking bigger, it makes us more confident on the field, and we, we've been showing it. Bryce takes the snap, going to keep it on the ground this time with Jackson. Huge hole, 40. Jackson left sideline across midfield. Down the sideline, 30, 20, 10, 5. Goodbye, touchdown. 65 yards in 25 seconds in. Deion Jackson has bursted the seal off of this one. Here's the handoff for Durant, straight ahead. First down and more, huge hole, 40. Mateo Durant grabs a gear, say goodbye. Touchdown. When he gets loose, it's all over. It was all over early there. Dion and Mateo was just definitely two of the best running backs I ever played behind. Uh, we learned a lot from those guys, how to run, pass pro, even sitting in the meeting room and just seeing how those guys take notes and pay attention in, in the classroom also. From day one, being in the meeting room with uh, Dion and Mateo, just learning how to be a professional back. Uh, both those guys are in the league right now, and so being able to succeed them succeed um, just makes me me want to succeed even more for myself as well for Jordan um, because I know like we can do it just seeing them do uh, what it was you know taking notes in the meeting room and then being able to you know make plays on the field when it mattered most first to 10 off the 23 Leonard to throw into the flat on the left he's got the running back waters up the left sideline hurdles a man and he'll have a first down out to the 33 yard line for every play for Jordan oh without it that was a hurdle I mean, Buddy was in the air for at least like 10 seconds. It felt like, man, I was like, dang, I don't know how, how he got up like that, but that was, that was incredible. The one-handed catch. Yeah, that, that was surprising. Uh, he made a, a great play. He, we've been working on uh, this new route, and he was taught like to turn his head, and, and he turned it so quick and quick again and just snagged. I don't know how he caught it. And I think I was more happy than he was on the play. Jordan's my dog for real. Um, I absolutely love playing with him. Uh, but we've been here since, since day one. Uh, we came into the room together, um, kind of had this vision of us being able to take over the mantle. And just to be able to live it now is pretty, uh, pretty special. And for us now, it's just most importantly, just getting us our team to take it to the next level, where that means like an ACC championship, that's what we want. Third and two, no pin and pull here. Straight ahead, Coleman inside the five, spinning into the end zone for the touchdown. Leonard from the shotgun with Waters to his right. Here's a snap to give to Waters. Over the top and in for the touchdown. He's got hops, and the Blue Devils are up 20 to nothing. Me and Jordan's relationship is great. Uh, we're super tight, uh, been cool since day one. Uh, but we, we talk a lot outside of you know the football field, um, and we just want greatness. 
for both of us. People have trusted Reed's Jewelers with their life's moments since 1946. That's because we're family owned. We treat everyone who walks through our doors or visits our website as a part of our family. We have a beautiful selection of jewelry and watches for any occasion. We offer free shipping and returns, as well as multiple payment options to make sure you find the perfect gift. See why people have trusted Reed's Jewelers to celebrate their life's moments for over 75 years. Behind every adventure is the road that got you there. Behind every passion are the tools that make it happen. And behind every Ford truck and SUV is a Carolina Ford dealer going the extra mile, finding the vehicle you're looking for. It's our commitment to your journey. That's what it means to be true blue. New inventory is arriving daily. For great offers on a new Ford truck or SUV, go to buyfordnow.com or see your Carolina Ford dealer today. Duke Football 360 with Dave Harding. Presented by Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. The Duke offense boasts one of the best rushing attacks in the ACC. Through the first five games of the season, Duke is averaging over five yards a carry. That's number one in the conference. A big reason for that is a talented and deep running back room and an athletic quarterback, but also an offensive line that's getting better every week and playing really physically. I thought they had their best game of the season against Virginia, and that showed in the stats, rushing for over 200 yards. That was a big difference in being able to pick up a Coastal Division victory. So today we're gonna break down some of the play of those five guys up front. This is a zone read early in the game. You know it's a zone read because the quarterback is reading the backside defensive end. If the defensive end plays out wide, doesn't crash down, he's gonna hand the ball off. So they leave him unblocked. And then the offensive line is responsible for the down lineman on this side and these two linebackers. So that's one, two, three, four, five for five offensive linemen. So we'll watch the left side first. That's the front side. Graham Barton, the left tackle, does a good job of getting engaged with his defensive end, working his feet down the field, does a great job of keeping uh, pad leverage as well. Then the left guard and center are in a double team. Center, this is Jacob Monk, sees that the defensive tackle plays right into the guard. So that gives him an indicator to go ahead and climb up to number 33, the linebacker. So here's the front side, all taken care of. Backside did a really good job of understanding leverage. This is Chance Lytle, the left or the right guard rather. They're in a double team, right guard, right tackle, through this defensive tackle up to the linebacker. So it would be a tendency for an inexperienced offensive lineman, knowing he's got a block number seven, to just run up the field because he's kind of uncovered. But he knows since the ball's probably going to his left and this guy's over here, why rush? Just take your time, give your tackle some body presence, help him on the double team, push, 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 and then at the last second, jump off and block the linebacker. Another thing that I'm loving out of this group is the mentality, finishing the blocks. Take a look at Jacob Monk. Once he gets engaged with his linebacker, he is determined 100% to finish. Keeps his feet working, 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 and then pile drives him right into the ground. That helps to set the tone, telling the defense it's going to be a long day up front. This is a little bit later in the game. Left guard, left tackle, double team. They've got this defensive tackle up to the linebacker. 
one of the best double teams I've ever seen just with the amount of movement that they get along the line of scrimmage. Look where the defensive tackle starts, and then as the play rolls, look where he finishes. That is 10 yards down the field. And I mentioned that they're responsible for also blocking the linebacker that's right here. They really don't end up having to get off the defensive tackle. They block the tackle into the linebacker, effectively getting a two for one deal. Great push. Look at the amount of space, that green area that opens up behind their block for the running back to run on. Beautiful job by that backside double team block. And at the end, uh, Graham Barton, the left tackle, comes off and points. Look, I got you and I got you. A little double up action. That's a perfect double team out of the Blue Devil offensive line. Then and finally, this is Jacquez Moore's first touch of the game. Turns out to be a touchdown run. I'm sure he would give credit to the offensive line. Watch, this is a pin and pull type style. You've got pin blocks by the guard. This is the left guard, Maurice McIntyre, and Chance Lytle, the backside guard, are pinning their man. So it's important that the defensive tackle doesn't work across their face to get to the play and the ball carrier. And then the front side here in Graham Barton is just working to stretch and open up this huge area right here. They're trying to expand the space between the guard and the tackle. Watch Barton, engage, drive your feet. Look at the strain, the body strain, the finish, not stopping, working his way, just digging his man out, moving him against his will. And then here comes the pull part. You're gonna see Jacob Monk, the center, Dre Harris, the right tackle, pull around. And watch Jacob Monk give up his body for this one. Takes the legs out of the linebacker. Harris gets up to the other backer. And anytime you can take care of the box, all the defensive linemen, the linebackers, you get a running back with one man to miss. That's the safety down the field. Good things are typically going to happen. And that's one of the best sights if you're an offensive lineman, a guy rumbling down the field into the end zone. Great work by the Duke offensive line. They're getting a lot of people in, playing and rotating folks. Their mentality has been great. Physicality, being tough, finishing their blocks, and understanding the technique really well. Yeah, I mean, I think the offensive line continues to get better every week. You know, we, we obviously put a lot on those guys, and, and we put a lot of pressure on them. They're, they're an experienced group. They've played a lot of football, and we needed them to be kind of the benchmark of our offense this year, uh, and they certainly are rising to the challenge. And I think every week they get a little bit better, they get a little bit more consistent, uh, and you start to see them understanding the scheme and the system a little better. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. You can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. And the handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by, like, a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to 100. Continental. Welcome to the Smart Choice in Tires. At Therabody, we believe that everybody deserves a chance to keep going, keep dancing, keep celebrating, and reuniting. It's never too late. Because everybody is a Therabody. There's a reason every Odyssey is named after the Odyssey. Because the world's most famous story isn't about staying put. It's about being there. So for those who want a story to tell, we have a world full of places to start. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like, they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and take tailgating very seriously. Game day and beyond, grab a football-ready big bow box.
I believe that now is the time for Duke football. Okay, the Duke brand is nationally recognized as a brand of excellence. The combined accomplishments of this university in academics and athletics is truly unparalleled. Okay, we have a world-renowned faculty. We have an amazing group of coaches that have achieved nothing short of greatness in their fields. The amount of ACC championships and national championships that this university has brought to Durham is amazing. And now it's time for football to get on that level. It's time for football to hold its end of the bargain and elevate itself to be in a national brand and a nationally recognized program. Our previous failures have nothing to do with what we can become now. We are looking to have success now. We are looking to improve now. We are looking to work hard now. That is the most important part of the championship mindset. We have to get that down and we have to understand that now is the time for Duke football. It's the only way, in my opinion, to take over a program. I think it's unfair to the kids in your locker room to, to not give them everything you have as quick as you can, right? And it's a balance because you are trying to build a long-term infrastructure. You're never going to compromise the values you have. And we're fortunate because our kids bought into our values very quickly, uh, which has allowed us to really focus on football and having success. Uh, and then it's something that kind of lasts forever, right? So you come off of a big win, and now it's immediately, we got to focus on the now. we got to focus on Monday morning and getting better and what's in front of us now. And it's just kind of something that really stays with us because uh, it, it applies in so many different aspects of our program. you got to always stay grounded because, you know, I tell our guys this all the time, the only thing that last week's win gets us next week is a big X on our chest and, and a little bit more attention from our opponent. And so, you know, we certainly don't get to carry any points over to next week. We don't get to carry any plays over to next week. And so we've got to go back and we've got to put in a great week of preparation every week uh, to give ourselves the opportunity to go out and execute. And if we can go out and execute, then we give ourselves a chance to win. For me, it's even more special because not only is it my first Duke team, it's really my first team ever as a head coach. And, and that's, that's a part of it. But really, it's more about the kids. I, honestly, I mean that. It's, it's just we felt like coming in here, we owed them the best opportunity they could have to have as much success as fast as they possibly could. And we challenged them because we told them, you know, as, the faster you buy in, the faster you're into our culture, the more we can get into football and doing those things. And, and to their credit, they've really bought into everything we've asked of them. Uh, and it's really allowed us to kind of take off in this early success.